We're in a series of messages on the revelatory nature of Christ's, ministry, of Christ's miracles, how that he's seen in them his nature and, and our condition. Yeah. They're like a commentary. The miracles are like a commentary on the human condition, inward condition, and on Christ's response to it. And so he sort of lived out. These miracles are living out uh, people's inability to see God, people's inability to hear God, the mm -hmm. sin growing like leprosy in, yeah. their, in their souls, uh, not being able to walk in the paths of the Lord like a lame man, and not being able to take hold of the things of God like a person with a withered hand. And all these things are, are lived out, see, in these miracles, and none of them were beyond Christ's ability, mm -hmm. which tells us that Christ is fully equal to the human condition. What sin has done to mankind, Jesus is fully competent to address this. So this is a this is a great consolation. I Amen. Amen. You'll notice something about this that uh, dawned on me this week uh, that the apostles never mentioned Christ's miracles. It's kind of Kind of interesting. You thought that uh -huh. some of the epistles didn't have mentioned that feeding of the five thousand. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think they pretty much assumed that people knew this, but they never made a point. They went down to what the miracles depicted or what they showed. Mm -hmm. They went down to that level. So it's quite a quite a thing, that interesting thing to consider. Now the miracle tonight is the one probably familiar to you: the stilling of the tempest. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke all have this record. You've probably noticed by now that Matthew, Mark, and Luke kind of track Christ's life of the same way. They mention the same events quite a bit. John, he, his gospel sort of stands independently. He has some things the others did too, but he showed the, more of the divine side of, mm -hmm. of Christ. More of the deity side he showed and how Christ felt about things and this sort of thing. Now Matthew's account is of this is found in the eighth chapter, in verses 23 through 27. I'm going to read these three accounts so we get the get the account in our mind. Matthew 8:28 20, to 23. When he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves and he was asleep mm -hmm. and his disciples came to him and awoke him saying Lord save us we perish and he saith unto them why are you so fearful O ye of little faith uh -huh. then he rose rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great calm and the men marveled saying what manner of man is this that even the winds and sea, the sea, obey him? Mark, the fourth chapter, provides us his account of this. <coughs> You'll notice each of these accounts, they sort of cover a little different aspect of, of it. Mark 4, 35. And the same day... When the even was come, he saith unto them, unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was, in the ship. Mm -hmm. And there were also with him other little ships. Mm -hmm. And there rose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Mm -hmm. quite, an, uh, quite an occasion. Luke, the eighth chapter, verse 22 through 25. 
Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into his ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the and rebuked the raging the wind and the raging of the water. Mm -hmm. And they ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? Mm -hmm. And they, being afraid, wondered, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water. And they obey him. Mm -hmm. hmm. Quite a quite a situation. You kind of get a picture here, kind of the, the circumstances as uh, they were headed to the other side at his command, and mm -hmm. a storm came down, and they were in great jeopardy. And they woke Jesus up and let him sleep for a while. Probably tried to navigate this thing by themselves, you know. <laughs> Finally woke him up, and one gospel writer said, "Don't you even, don't you even care? I mean, don't you even care?" Mm -hmm. And he woke, got up, and he Matthew says he first rebuked them. What? What, what is this? What, where's your faith? Why don't you have any faith? Why are you so? Why are you so afraid? Why? So you got to put yourself in this situation. Maybe, maybe transplant one of your circumstances into here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe take a circumstance you've been wrestling with. Mm -hmm. kind of scared you. Mm -hmm. and put it, in, put it in here. Amen. And here was Jesus. Said, what are you, what are you afraid? What are you afraid for? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Where's your faith? One might say you don't have any faith. No faith. You have no faith. Hmm. Right out of a situation. And then he just, he just spoke to the wind. Stop. Peace. And just all suddenly whew, just became what we call placid. See, mm -hmm. just like a still, no wind. And the disciples. They said, what kind of man is this? Yeah, they've been with him now for a while. They've been with him about a, maybe about a year and six months by now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, boy, but this, this showed an aspect of Jesus they hadn't seen mm -hmm. hitherto. They would seen him work some miracles with withered hands and things mm -hmm. like this, but think of, think of the large nature, what a large field of nature is. Mm -hmm. It's one, and they so, boy, these, these winds and waves, they even obey him. Yeah. Amen. And they were afraid. Now let's look at the background of this uh, of this miracle. Matthew provides us with a little insight that Jesus saw great multitudes were starting to starting to gather to him. They were just pressing in mm -hmm. because they never people never seen anyone like Jesus before. They never seen anything like this. Never heard mm -hmm. anybody speak like this before. It was absolutely unique. Mm -hmm. See, one of the curses of our day is this: say religion is so average. Yeah. It's no wonder they have to have campaigns trying to get people interested because there's nothing happening and people just don't gravitate where there's nothing going on. And the truth of the matter is that a lot of, I don't mean to be critical at this point, but a lot of these mega churches, there really isn't anything going on but a lot of people getting together in one place. And that's, mm -hmm. pretty, much the, <laughs> that's pretty much the extent. If you want to see what they've done, you've got to open up your eyes and look at the building maybe they got. Mm -hmm. Maybe go outside and survey what they call a campus these days. Mm -hmm. Or count how many people are out there, but really, there's really not a whole lot going on. Mm -hmm. That isn't going on among the Muslims. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. <laughs> Same, or among some of the marketing people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. Boat shows could tell you the same thing. They're doing the same thing. See, mm -hmm. so it's it's a curse of averageness. Yes. But see, there's nothing about Jesus that's average. Right. Amen. Amen. You can't put him in any sense on an average plateau. Yep. Amen. You cannot do it. So he saw the multitudes. They were flocking to him. Matthew 8, 18, he says, When Jesus saw the multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart to the other side. Mm -hmm. Let's get out of here. <laughs> now that sure wouldn't fly, will it? No. Would it? No. With the modern concepts of religion. Let's leave now. It's time to go. Too many people. Yeah. Too many. Let's go to the other side. Matthew 8 also tells us that just before he left, a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I'll follow thee. It's like he heard him say, let's go to the other side. And here come this scribe. 
scribe was the fellow that copied the Bible. He said, I'll go wherever you go. Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Sure, you sure you sure you want to go? <laughs> I didn't, I'm not inducting a cakewalk here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Verse 21 of Matthew 8, Another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Give me a little time to wrap things up at home. Jesus said unto him, Follow me and let, their, let the dead bury their dead. Now this is this is just before he got in the boat to go to the other side. So there were some people wanting to like go, get in the boat with him, you might say. Yeah. Let me go too. And I said, there's some people, some people can't go with me where I'm going. Mm -hmm. You gotta read what, between the lines here what Jesus is saying. Jesus is going someplace that some people just flat can't go. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. You gotta go. Can't go. You got you got too many irons in the fire. Mm -hmm. You got too many, your attention is split too much. Can't go with me. Mark gives us a little further insight on what preceded this. Mark 4.34, Without a parable spake he not unto them, that's the multitudes, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples, and the same day when even was come, he saith unto him, Let's pass over to the other side. So he just finished, uh, finished an evening with his disciples, opening up the truth to them. Mm -hmm. Luke says in Luke 8, 22, Now it came to pass on a certain day. Mm -hmm. That's like a divine calendar day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus doing the works of God. That he went into a ship with his disciples and said unto them, Let's pass over to the other side of the lake. Mm -hmm. Didn't tell them why. Mm -hmm. But they launched for it. If you want to be seeing here, mm -hmm. if you want to be with Jesus, you got to like, it can't be retarded in your response. Mm -hmm. Can't be delayed, can't come out and say, wait, 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 I'd like to go, but I got a couple of things I got to do first. Mm -hmm. Sorry, when Jesus is on the move, you got to drop everything. Mm -hmm. Move out with him. So that's what, uh, well, when said go to the other side of the lake, you know where they were going? Where that gathering demoniac was. Mm -hmm. That's the other side of the lake. When they got to the other side, there was that guy in the tombs. Mm -hmm. What was this? This was Jesus read the divine calendar, so to speak. So my father's, he's moving the work over to Gadara over there. I'm going to leave the multitudes mm -hmm. for one man. Over That's there. right. Yes. Hmm? Mm -hmm. This is the truth. And when you say multitude in the east, like it's not like multitude in Joplin. <laughs> multitude. I'm going to go over here. i got a schedule of another work over here. Now let's look at the instances, the circumstances around this miracle. <coughs> we see first of all, of course, that he sent the multitudes away. Well, this would have been an ideal miracle, don't you think, for the multitudes to be there and see this madman healed? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that, well, that's, that word would have spread, wouldn't it? See this wild man out there, they tried to chain up and he broke the chains cut himself with stones and howling like a wolf at nighttime. Nobody could come by there. That you think, well, this would be something the multitude should see. It's not what Jesus thought. He sent the multitudes away mm -hmm. and just took his disciples over there with him. <coughs> something uh, Mark adds that there's no small interest said there were some little ships with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've often wondered, they must have seen this storm and got kind of in this too. See, these little ships. Little ships. So you might say and look at it this way that any ship Jesus is not in is a little ship. <laughs> So other little ships were along and uh, mm -hmm. no doubt saw the miracle of the sea. Quite a thing to think about. And as they were sailing across the sea, Jesus fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Well, this was on purpose. I'm sure he was tired. He'd been uh, laboring in the work of his father. The one gospel writer said he went into the back of the ship, hinder part, and one said he slept on a pillow. Put a pillow down there and laid down and went to sleep. And there wasn't any tempest when he went to sleep, but as soon as he went to sleep, it's like the devil couldn't do anything while Jesus was awake. You got to really see this. Amen. And nothing could happen while he's awake. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. See if you can track through and see where Jesus ever had to wade through a storm or a flood or a hail. Or this never happened where Jesus was. He was. This kind of stuff didn't happen. As soon as he fell asleep. 
Here it come, a great tempest of the sea. And the uh, scripture says that the waves come into the boat. Mm -hmm. One gospel writer says the boat was filled. Mm -hmm. And I, I have an idea that they were working to get the water out of there for a while. I don't think this all just happened quick. They were probably trying to get this water out of there and they couldn't, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it at all. And a uh, great storm. One um, Luke says a storm came down. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It's a storm came down on that sea. It's almost like targeted this, <laughs> targeted this boat. And the sea, Matthew says, it was covered. With, the boat was covered with water. Ship covered with the waves. So, yeah, be like a like a tsunami wave just sweeping over the thing. And Mark says the waves beat into the ship. Mm -hmm. It's like pounded it down, filled it up with water. And Luke says that if the boat was filled with water and they were in jeopardy, he had. So it's about to drown. The boat's about to go down. Mm -hmm. And about that time, they they said it's time to wake Jesus up. The, boat, the boat's about to go down. Mm -hmm. we, we thought we could keep it afloat. Like it's something like fishing all night. We fished all night, mm -hmm. fished, fished, fished. But finally Jesus, he got, he got the catch for them. Well, these, these men struggled with this for some time. Mm -hmm. Finally, they woke up Jesus, and uh, Matthew tells us that they sort of informed him as though he didn't know. They said, Master, we're, we're, we're perishing here. We're, we're about to go down. Seems like they knew that he, he'd do something about it. They, they knew enough about Jesus to, he wasn't going to let the boat sink, but they wanted, they just informed us, it's, it's time now to wake up. Mark said he was in the back part of the ship and they woke him up and said, don't you care? Mm -hmm. Well, let's put it in modern language. If there's a God, how come this is happening? Mm -hmm. you know, put it in today's language. You think people stop talking like this? People still talking like That's this. Right. Why did God let this happen to me? Mm -hmm. I was trying real hard. Well, that's what they were saying to him. Don't mm -hmm. you care? Why didn't you wake up on your own? Why did we have to come wake you up? You're the Lord. You should know these things. Luke says, they said, Master, Master. Like, they want to make sure he didn't Master, Master. We're dying here. Mm -hmm. And he rose. And uh, Philip says he rebuked. He rebuked the wind and the sea. Matthew says he rebuked the wind and the sea. I've wondered about nature. See, it says that nature is waiting for the manifestation yeah. of the sons of God. So all nature, they, oh, this is the one that made us here. Mm -hmm. So whatever he says, we've we got to do. Mm -hmm. Now there are people that uh, claim to have all this authority from God, and the, they have all this power in their words. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've heard these. If you, if you haven't, these people are preaching all the time on the television. The mm -hmm. power of the tongue, mm -hmm. the tongue of powers in the tongue, and whatever you say comes to pass. And they, they talk this stuff. But see, they don't talk to the wind. No. Mm -hmm. One of the great citadels of this kind of teaching is in the tornado alley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, between here and Tulsa, it's like tornado alley. Yeah. These men can't speak to these winds. No. They don't make any pretense that they can. Mm -hmm. Nobody went out and rebuked that tsunami wave, not a single solitary man mm -hmm. That's right. that claims they got all this power. huh? They didn't go out and cause that to cease. Right. All these hurricanes coming up, are these men of God being called in to stop them? Mm -hmm. Are they? Mm -hmm. No, they're not. Why not? Because they can't right. stop them. Mm -hmm. That's why. Which means they're mouthing a lie in their preaching. Mm -hmm. Hoodwinking people. But nature knew who this man was. Yeah. Amen. When this man Amen. stood up and said, Peace! The wind stopped abruptly and the waves calmed down. Amen. Now that's, that, this is the real thing we're talking that's about right. here. That's right. There's just a lot of too much philosophizing mm -hmm. about divine power and all. There's just too much jabber about it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. If you really got it, nature's going to know it. You better be sure. Amen. Amen. That if you've got this power, nature's going to be the first to know it because they're waiting for the manifestation yeah. of the sons of God. They're looking uh -huh. for somebody that's got God in them. Uh -huh. They found it in this man here. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
and so they just abruptly, they just abruptly stop acting abnormal. Mm -hmm. See, the wind was acting abnormal mm -hmm. at this time. Why? Why isn't the wind when it's stormy? Why isn't that normal? And why is it calm abnormal? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because Jesus is upholding all things yeah. by the word of his power. Yeah. And when there's storms, it's abnormal. And only Jesus can stop abnormality. Yeah. Amen. And he did. Mm -hmm. Bless God. I don't doubt that uh, <coughs> Satan, sort of God, sort of let him do this. He no doubt had an intent to destroy the master here yeah. and his disciples with him. But he couldn't do it. Now in this whole process, Jesus is very careful to point out that the, that the wind isn't the only thing that was acting abnormal. Mm -hmm. And the waves wasn't the only condition abnormal. His disciples, who were with him, who just had spent a night hearing him open up the things of the kingdom, who would witnessed him do things that nobody else could do, they got in the situation they were afraid. Mm -hmm. Now the psychiatrist would be able to open up to you why they were afraid. Oh, yeah. But Jesus, when he said, why are you afraid? Let me tell you, they didn't have an answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was no satisfactory answer. Nobody has a right to be afraid when Jesus is on board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. amen. Yeah, amen. Even though we will be the first to acknowledge mm -hmm. that the best of us have struggled with fear. Mm -hmm. We do this, but if you will listen and Jesus asks you, why were you afraid? You'll find out it'll stop your mouth every time. Mm -hmm. You'll not be able to, yeah. to explain it. You'll rather will seek grace to help in the time of, Amen. Time of need. Amen. Matthew says, oh ye of little faith, little, little faith. You know, when you're little children, when they are with sitting by your side, they feel safe, mm -hmm. you know. But when there's a lightning storm, I mean, they're glad to be near you, but they're scared to death when all this stuff is going on. Mm -hmm. Little. That's one of the consequences of being little. One of the consequences of being little is when it's calm and nice, you can play in your playpen and have a nice time. But when something really like a rabid dog or something comes around, <laughs> Little faith. I'm telling you, little faith will not take you through. Yeah. Little faith doesn't mean faith like a grain of mustard seed. That's not what little faith means. That's right. Faith like a grain of mustard seed speaks of the potential of faith. That's right. A mustard seed's worthless as long as it's just a mustard seed. Yeah. It's when it's planted and grows. See, so that little faith doesn't mean you. you, you it's good that you have faith, but you don't have enough of it. That's. Mm -hmm. That's not what he means. In fact, one gospel writer, Mark, says they had no faith. He said, why do you have no faith? No faith. No faith. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That fear can't rise out of faith. Amen. Fear really can't pop out of, pop out of faith. Mm -hmm. Faith suppresses fear. It does do it. So if you have fear, we're not saying like you're sinning and you need to, you're bad. What we're saying is take that thing to God. What time I'm afraid I'll put my trust in thee. Amen. Like Amen. the psalmist Amen. said. And uh, Luke says, he asked him, where, where is, where's your faith? What, what happened? Where's your faith? Got out here in the middle of the sea where well, you really had to depend on me. What happened to your faith? Well, it's... Uh, why did he say that? You think, why, why was he so hard on him? Well, don't forget, Matthew said, he said to them before this, let's depart mm -hmm. to the other side. He told them where they were going. This is the Lord of glory talking. Mark says, Jesus said, let's pass over to the other side. Mm -hmm. He announced to them where they were going. He didn't bother to tell them there's a storm between here and there. Mm -hmm. He just said, now we're here, we're going there. Mm -hmm. The, the, well, faith had, faith doesn't say focus on the storm, it forces faith focuses on there. Amen. See, faith looks over to the other side. Well, the master said, go to the other side. Let's, let's keep going to the other side. Luke says he told him, uh, let's go over there. Let's go, let's go over to the let's go over to the other side. But there are this the difficulty sort of washed those words out of his heart, out of their hearts. That's what, uh, that's what trouble does when people have little faith or no faith. Or 
they really they really don't trust in God. Their faith is kind of like a creedal faith. Yeah, we believe. Mm -hmm. Point one, two, three, four. This is what we believe. Well, have you ever noticed when you're in trouble that that's not much of a comfort? Amen. Let's see. I'm in trouble now. Let me see. A, you know, let me read the creed of the church. Let's, let's, let, me, let me read the plan of salvation here, the f five points, and see if that'll help me out. You ever notice it doesn't help you out? Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it? Because faith in a person is not in the creed. Amen. Amen. It's not in a system, a religious system, or a doctrinal system of some kind. Faith is in the Lord Himself. Amen. So Jesus, He calmed. He was very gracious. He calmed everything. Your, the result of the miracle was, Matthew says, it was a great calm. So it was like unusually calm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't even like little ripples. It was as calm as the storm was stormy. See, it mm -hmm. was an unusual storm, unusual calm. Mm -hmm. You know you've been delivered when you make that transition. When you come out of unusual trouble to unusual blessing, you know, ah, oh, I've been delivered. See, mm -hmm. <laughs> the Lord did that. Mark says the wind ceased. Like it just stopped. And there was a great calm. Mm -hmm. Luke says <coughs> the wind ceased and a great calm came upon them. Now here we just, we're getting a glimpse of, uh, of someone who is in control of everything. He is in control. <coughs> now man's been made for dominion. God at the fir very first said, let's make man and give him dominion over the work of our hands. Wind's the work of his hands. Waves is the work of his hands. Let's give him dominion. Mm -hmm. And so some people, they're teaching God's people this. They're saying now in Christ you're getting all the dominion back that, oh. you, that you lost in it. And uh, they build a kind of a case for this. Just speak to this and speak to that. Yeah. And refuse to accept this and refuse to accept that. I still remember the day my daughter called me at, uh, while I was at work. said, Dad, I have... Uh, I have Lou Gehrig's disease like mom did. She was kind of unsettled. She said, but I've refused to accept it. See, she'd been taught this. Mm -hmm. She'd been taught this. Yeah. And brother, let me tell you, it didn't help her at this time. Yeah. No. I'm just going to refuse to accept it. I said, Leah, this is not right. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should sit back and accept it. I'm saying this isn't how you address it. Mm -hmm. You are not powerful enough to say no mm -hmm. to these things. And Amen. you, brethren, aren't either. Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't make any difference who teaches you this. You stick your finger in your ears. These people are spiritual airheads. Yeah. They're not true and they're not right. Mm -hmm. You do not have enough power mm -hmm. to reject any circumstance that comes on you. Yeah. No matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the only one whose word is with power. Yep. Amen. Mm -hmm. And everybody else, you all just let the circumstance be big enough and it'll, you'll find that it's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The scriptures tell us that man was made for dominion. Interesting, mm -hmm. found in Hebrews, the second chapter, verses 9 and 10. And after he outlines this, this is why God made man. He said, but we do not yet see, we do not yet see, See mm -hmm. all things put under it. Yeah, right. That's Hebrews 2 8. That's what it says. Amen. We don't see it yet. Mm -hmm. So if someone says it's here, we say, wait a minute. Not yet. Yeah. But we see Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's a man. He's not a son of Adam. He's the son of God, but he's mm -hmm. a man. Mm -hmm. You can't, well, we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of death should taste death for every man, for it became him, or it was becoming uh -huh. appropriate to him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, <coughs> to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Uh -huh. So what do you see in Jesus? He's got the dominion yeah. that was promised man. Yes. He, he's got it. And in our text proves he has it. Yeah. This is not just theorizing. Mm -hmm. He spoke the wind down. Mm -hmm. 
He spoke the waves down. Yeah. Not with a long exhortation. <laughs> he just said, peace, be still. That was it. Amen. This is the Christ we have. And he, don't mm -hmm. think that he can't say the same to your circumstance. Yeah. Like, don't think that there's some circumstance he can't do this in. Mm -hmm. He can do this in any circumstance. And when seeing some of his miracles, we've seen him speak things away, like fevers, leprosy, withered hands. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We've been raising the dead. He can do this, but the, the blessing comes when you connect this with your own yes. life and circumstances. All Jesus has to do is get interested in your case mm -hmm. and like take it on, so to speak, mm -hmm. and it's going to be resolved. Mm -hmm. You've got to believe this, mm -hmm. and you pray with this in mind. He's not going to do this automatically. Mm -hmm. He didn't just wake up, did he, in the back of the ship? Mm -hmm. He stayed asleep because someone woke him up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's how Jesus appears now to sometimes to be sleeping. He's not really sleeping, you understand? But it looks that way, but he's gonna, you got to wake him up, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got to say, Master, Master, we're perishing here. Yeah. Or you don't say, Master, give me a couple minutes of your time and sort of give us an idea of what to do. Mm. Ah, that's not what they said, was it? Mm -mm. He apprised him of the real situation. Well, nature, the scripture tells us, Romans 8, 19, is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. I wondered if maybe they didn't think maybe this is going to be the manifestation. Mm -hmm. In other words, they know, they, nature, they're watching us. They're waiting for the real <laughs> children of God. They know that everybody's not a child of God. They know, they know that already. Mm -hmm. But they're waiting for the real ones to become evident of when they are. Nature's going to obey him, mm -hmm. just like it obeyed Jesus here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to have dominion over the Word of God's hands. Quite a thing to Amen. think about. So that's, that's a, so great result, first of all, in heaven. Second was the response of people. Now, these weren't people that had never seen anything that Jesus did. They'd seen things Jesus did, but they marveled. They marveled, saying, What manner of man is this that even the winds and waves obey him? Mm -hmm. What kind of man is this? Mark says, Mark 4, 41, they feared. They feared exceedingly. That's when the wind stopped, mm -hmm. they feared. When the waves stopped, they feared. Why? Because they knew they were in the presence of some tremendous power that went beyond mm -hmm. human ability. Yeah. It went to discern. It was the kind of power that could speak them out of existence. It was that kind of power. It could raise them up and lift them up. It was that kind of power. And they feared, Mark says, exceedingly, and said to one another, what manner of man is this? <laughs> He's in our boat, remember. This is yeah. in our boat. What manner of man is this that even the wind and sea obey him? Luke says, they being afraid, wondered. That is, they weren't thinking about anything else. Their mm -hmm. mind was not wandering. If Jesus ever works and you see it and you've got a heart for this, your mind won't wander. Mm -hmm. You better mm -hmm. believe it. Amen. What manner of man is this for he commands even winds and waters and they obey him? I think one of the great <coughs> curses of the type of religion we, we kind of confront all the time is the casualness of the modern church. There's nothing going on and it, most people know there's nothing going on. And if something of just the slightest measure happens, it just sets everybody to glad because, because ordinarily nothing's going on. Mm -hmm. Nothing's really happening. For the most part, Jesus is not known among the people. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that uh, right. a lot of the uh, singing and things like this that I've heard that says to be in the name of Jesus, that if Jesus showed up, it, that people probably drop dead of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'd be so scared. Mm -hmm. They'd be so ashamed they look the way they look mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and pretend in the way they pretend. Mm -hmm. Maybe these, these men in this boat, see, they were boatmen. Mm -hmm. Some of them at least were. They were boatmen. They knew how to navigate on water. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, they didn't have a bit of confidence in their ability when this storm came up. God in circumstances will knock down your supposed strength. Yes. The area you think you're so strong in, and maybe you may be stronger than the average person in. You may very well be. But God has a way of letting, letting a storm come up that just knocks you flat. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you say, the only thing I can do, I've got to go to Jesus on this because I can't, 
I can't go to some other expert. I'm going to have to go to Jesus on this. And he's going to help me. Amen. So I'm charging that for the most part, Jesus is not known in the professed church because you don't hear responses like this. You don't, after an answer to prayer has been reported, you don't hear, oh, what man or man is this? You don't hear things like this. Is there no one's astounded by it at all? It's so normal that even when something's done that they say only God can do it, it doesn't affect anybody. This affected the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have briefly some lessons about this, this miracle. And here's a big one to see, that when you look like you're alone, or the words of our miracle here, Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat. He's not even up in the front where you're navigating. What's happening is your faith is being tested. Yes. That's what's happening. You are being tried. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 48 Verse 10 says, I have refined thee, mm -hmm. not with silver. I have chosen thee in, in, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Amen. Now see what, it, what this storm did, this event did, it sort of filtered out mm -hmm. these men from the multitude. They would seen them do other things, see, mm -hmm. but this filtered them out. He refined them. They, they saw him clearer. Mm -hmm. than they've seen him before. Zechariah 13, 9. I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it's my people. Amen. They shall say, the Lord's my God. Well, see, this actually happened in this boat. Mm -hmm. This actually happened. These people said, this is our God. This, this is the one down here to sleep. Let's wake him up. Mm -hmm. And he did wake up. You remember when the, the prophets of Baal were calling on their God, he didn't, he didn't wake up. Mm -hmm. You remember? He didn't wake up. Remember Elijah said, hey, he's asleep. That's right. <laughs> he didn't wake up. Jesus woke up. One of the differences between a true God and a false God mm -hmm. is that the true God comes to your aid. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's, one of the, that's one of the distinct differences. Yeah. He comes to your aid. Mm -hmm. There are some people who have embraced a God that he doesn't come to their aid. That's right. Mm -hmm. He doesn't give them help in the time of trouble. And again, Malachi 3, 3. I'm showing you here that God tests mm -hmm. your tensile or tests the strength of your faith like it tests the strength of metal or the mm -hmm. purity of gold. He shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that, that mm -hmm. they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Mm -hmm. So like unclean hands can't give God anything. He mm -hmm. will not take it. You believe me, I'll tell you this. He yeah. will not take it. Mm -hmm. But uh, purifying and refining and trying or testing has a way of getting your hands clean. Mm -hmm. So you can offer God something. So that's what tri trial does. You're being tested. First Peter 5.10, But the God of all grace who hath called us in unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. This is what God does. So if you uh, you're a young family and all of a sudden your resources they've got got away from you. They're there. They're all going, what am I gonna do? But I've been here. Mm -hmm. You're being tested. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Are you going to run to God with the situation? Are you going to try and work it out? Are you going to go to a financial counselor? What, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. See, he's testing you. <laughs> and if you have faith, it will pass the test. You, yes. will, you will go to Jesus and wake him up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Or what, perhaps you've, uh, you, you, you need a job. I also have been here. I'm mm -hmm. glad to report. You need a job and you can't find one. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about this, son? Huh? You're going to go to the Lord and wake him up? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to just try and work the thing out yourself? They said trial is a test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. trial is not designed to crush you. Mm -hmm. It's designed to get out of you what God doesn't want in the first place. Yeah. Yes. You really got to see this. Mm -hmm. One of the trouble we have with a lot of counselors and all this sort of thing is people never look honestly at trouble. Mm -hmm. 
They look at trouble as every trouble can be resolved. If you can just find some kind of expert on this, we can get out of this trouble. See, you've got to quit thinking like that when you're serving the Lord. You, there's only one expert, Amen. and it's Christ Amen. himself. So you're being tested when trials come. And here's, a, here's another thing you see from this. Jesus is not always apparently active, even though he is there. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so you may not just see him working on the right hand, working on the left hand. Sometimes you can just see him everywhere. You know what I'm Just see him everywhere. See him on a job. You see him in the home. You see him everywhere. And other times you can't see him anywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, he's this way. This way God is. Mm -hmm. We have Paul as an example of this. 2 Corinthians 1 8 and 9. We would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us, like the storm coming down, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, and so much we despaired of life. Mm -hmm. so that's the same thing happened to these disciples here, same thing. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. Mm -hmm. But in God was raised us the dead. So this is, this is a spiritual thing that exactly parallels our text. Mm -hmm. When he went to Macedonia, a storm came down and his boat's about to sink. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. And there wasn't any way out. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go back to shore and wait till the storm was over. You had to get to the other side and you just couldn't do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. That happened to Paul. We also learn, <clears throat> incidentally, in these circumstances, remember, it's like Jesus sleeping in the back of the boat. It doesn't mean he's not there. It doesn't mean that. Where is he? You start that way. You've got to know he's here, but he hasn't been aroused to action yet. Mm -hmm. How many times you read in the Psalms, the psalmist would call God to rise up to action. Mm -hmm. Rise up and defend us. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what he said. He said, I know you're there, but come to our aid. Yeah. Trials, you learn another thing. Trials are calculated to make us perceive our need for Christ. Mm -hmm. yes, amen. The fuller need that we have for Christ. And another thing you learn is that uh, adversarial conditions should move you to respond instantly. Adversarial conditions do respond to Jesus instantly. You may not mm -hmm. be able to make the thing go away, yeah. but that doesn't mean it can't go away. Mm -hmm. It will go away if Jesus just sits, speaks, go. Mm -hmm. circumstance go you can't do that and there's no member of the body of Christ that can do that mm -hmm. that's right there may be saved I've heard people every once in a while say this I bind Satan well I know Jesus said whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven I know he said that but he wasn't talking about binding Satan he was talking about not forgiveness of sin not being made available and he goes on and tells you that Mm -hmm. That the sins you loose will be loose. See? Mm -hmm. He tells you what he's talking about. Yeah. You can't bind Satan. Not yet. Yeah. But but you will be able to in the mm -hmm. <laughs> in the day of judgment, mm -hmm. you'll put them under your feet. This is an important truth to see. Listen, there's people telling this to people. I don't know whether I've bought into it myself. I can't I try and forget some of my past years. Mm -hmm. But if you can't if you can't stop any adversarial circumstance, don't kid yourself, you can't bind Satan. That's why you can't stop it. That's right. If you can't speak away some circumstance in your life, just be honest about it. The reason you can't is because you can't bind Satan. If you could bind Satan, if you could, mm -hmm. you could speak it away. Yes. So just put it to the acid test. Jesus can speak it away. Mm -hmm. In fact, he told you, I bind the strong man. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that binds a strong man, mm -hmm. not you. You live in the result of it. Yeah. So you must come to the point when you uh, know what to do in a storm. Mm -hmm. What do I do in a storm? Do I die for fear? <laughs> it's the best, best to beat a path to the Savior. Amen. Mm -hmm. you probably should have been fellowshipping with him in the first place instead of letting him sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It would have been better to have a few comments with him. <laughs>